Hello and welcome to an all new Marvel cast, Explosion Network's hub of all things Marvel. We're going to talk about everything MCU and beyond, from Avengers and Defenders to Simon Shroud and Loxia's Crown. I'm Ashley Hobley, the Explosion Network's resident podcast host who makes their co host watch terrible vampire movies. Join me today, Astonish and Dawnblight. Uh, this is the worst of them all. Woo! I'm so glad I went and watched I it. I mean, we'll Yay. get that. To- We'll get to that if you haven't figured it out. Today we're talking about Morbius. Long delayed uh, movies finally out there. Apparently doing financially well, which, you know, raises a lot of questions. Uh, yeah. Please be aware we'll be freely discussing anything and everything about the pop themes in any of the movies. So if you haven't watched it, come back later. That's it. Let's jump to our discussion of Morbius. You need a doctor? I am a doctor. I should have died years ago. People all over the world have my disease. I'm here. To find a cure, we have to push the boundaries, take the risks. If you're gonna run, do it now. People are strange. Dr. Michael Morbius? You've been missing for two months. When you're a stranger. Then you were found on a container ship that washed up off a Long Island. Faces look ugly when you're alone. Johnny! What did you do to yourself, Doctor? I wish I knew. Directed by Daniel Espinosa, Written by Matt Sazama and Burke Sharpless. Based on Marvel Comics, starring Jared Leto, Adria Arjano, Jared Harris, Al Madrigal, Tyrese Gibson, and Matt Smith. Dangerously ill with a rare blood disorder and determined to save others from the same fate, Dr. Morbius attempts a desperate gamble. While at first it seems to be a radical success, a darkness inside of him is soon unleashed. Dylan, what did you think of Morbius? <laughs> Um, it was out, out of trash. I mean, there's nothing really redeeming about this movie. I think it's way worse than both Venoms. Um, and I know they have their fans, I guess, audience. Um, mm-hmm. I didn't really like either, but there's that. I think Tom Hardy's sort of performance and just the weirdness of that character at least adds some life to it, even if, like, for example, the second one just becomes nonsensical once it turns to the CGI action fuckfest in the later half. Um, this one, Jared Leto is just his, the, just his performance is just so the opposite of what sort of <laughs> he's known for. Like he's usually like overacting to even yes. win an award or overacting to become a meme as the Joker or whatever. Uh, this one's just like, I don't know. He's just nothing. He's so boring. He's just like a super <laughs> boring character. Super boring performance. Tyrus Gibson's terrible in this. Um, looks like he's constantly like reading off a script. Uh, <laughs> like, um, what happened to you, doctor? <laughs> like all this sort of stuff. He was terrible. Um, the only good person in this is um, Matt Smith. Oh, thank God. Um, yep, we agree. Matt. <laughs> who, who is bringing some life to the movie with, and you can tell he's like, into it and trying to inject something into it, into the movie. Um, however, the script really doesn't, I mean, his character and his story doesn't, he doesn't get that much to go with, but he's the only good thing I think in the whole movie. Um, the girl that who gets knocked out for the majority of the movie, she's like pretty good for the time that she's in it, but she's barely in it after she's, um, knocked out on the boat or whatever until the late half, of course. Um, otherwise, yeah. And I mean, all the, the fight scenes are terrible. They're just, CGI smoke screens, people bounce your I don't I don't know what's happening most of the time. It's not engaging at all. Um yeah, it was terrible. I hated it. Yeah, this was pretty bad. It it, it has a terrible flaw of just being boring. You know? Not not going for anything, not being fun in any way, just bland and boring across the board. Um I think, you know there's some there could have been some interesting ideas in there. I think, like you said, Matt Smith's probably the best person who's putting in the most effort. Um, and most, it's fun when he's on screen. 
is like those are the highlights of the movie. Um, probably because he gets to have a bit of personality and like he's clearly not a hundred percent a good dude or trying to be a good dude. Um, so you know, him willing to embrace his uh, killer instinct is cool, but it it just feels so bland and so boring and so stupid at certain points. Uh, you got Al Magical and Tyrus Gibson as these detectives, and they do barely anything the entire movie. Like, they, they, the final thing they do is look up in the sky as Morbius flies away with a bunch of bats for some reason. Uh, I don't know why all these bats are showing up at this point. Um, for this big, they literally just show up at the crime. They show up at the crime scenes to literally give like exposition and explain how gruesome the crimes are, yeah. or the bodies were, or whatever. This one was drained of blood. All right, cool. I mean, Al Madrigal's giving me a little bit of personality and, like, dry humor and that kind of stuff. But, yeah, Tyrese Gibson, uh, not good. Although I did find it personally amusing when uh, Jared Leto says, you won't like me when I'm hungry, because I really wanted Tyrese to go, I know what that's. <laughs> hungry. Uh, yeah, there's it's just a lot of weird things. Uh, especially, pff, I don't know how to talk about this movie in like any sort of meaningful way because you know it is just so bland and like. I mean, the idea of Morbius the Living Vampire is kind of interesting, um, but because they're trying to tie it in so closely to, uh, this Sony universe, is like, they're trying to set keep that same t- kind of tone. It's kind of. I want him so bad to be a hero, um, but you don't even really get a, an arc from him struggling. Like, he kills those few people in the boat, and it's, like, straight to, like, oh, he's... But we got to make you like him, because we want him to be part of this Sinister Six thing, which we'll come back to. Um, yeah. And, like, you know, all that. So there's, like, really the the story that should have been told, where he is a bad guy and then, like, sort of overcomes that. I don't think yeah. he's here at all, because it's just, like, sort of pushed through to make sure he's a good guy. Um, he does bad one bad guys. thing, yeah. That's it. Yeah. Um, but, the, yeah, I mean, there's so many things in this movie that just weirded. Like, it's, there's a couple specific things that just really annoyed me for some reason, like, including the first time he brings in the his doctor friend to the his room and then, like, she discovers those bats in there and it's like, oh, this is a big secret that I'm experimenting on bats. And then, like, two minutes later, another random doctor walks in and is like, oh, she's going into, like, a coma or whatever. I'm like... I thought this was a big-ass secret. Now, this other, <laughs> lady, this other lady's just, like, walking in, like, hey. I was like, what the it's fuck? It's fine. She dies at the end of the <laughs> Yeah, I was like, like she, she, she can see her. Um, yeah. I mean, Jared Harris is... Pff, Here? For like he's there. Months. He's there to die at the end, right before the love interest dies, apparently. It's, like, weird that it those two things, like, back-to-back. Yeah, but she comes back to life somehow. She does. Because vampires, that's why. Yeah, but but Jared doesn't. No, because vampires. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or will he? I don't know. But yeah, having those two deaths, quotation marks, uh, back to back is like weird. Like the bad guy trying to motivate the, vil- the, the good guy. But by killing them both. He's like, why wouldn't you spread them out a bit more through the movie? Or yeah, it it it, it just kind of. I don't think any of the fighting looked good. Like any of the, I think the echolocation kind of looked interesting, and that's a way interesting way to show it off. But like all the smokiness, like kind of just took away from everything. It just yeah, I don't even know why he would. I, I didn't even understand the beginning of the movie. I assume he was he poured put his hand his blood out there trying to catch the bats, but then why is he in front of the string thing and they just try and capture him in the string thing? There's a lot of I questions. mean that's where he captured the bats. I don't know how it worked, but that's no. how he yeah he captured the bats somehow. Yeah, mm. yeah. I mean, and then yeah. Look, the only other thing worth our conversation to have for this movie because it's all duration and there's nothing really yeah. to discuss is the end credit scenes and then also the marketing and how much like so much was changed from the trailers and yeah, um, it was well yeah. yeah, fair portion of stuff was changed. Like obviously that line, the li- end line that they use in the trailer of "I am Venom" and then introducing himself as Michael Morbius instead. Yeah. 
and even some other shots. Like I think there's the shot of Matt Smith walking down the subway. Matt Smith has changed, so he actually looks like himself, not the vampire version, which is what he looks like in actual film. Uh, anything with Spider Man on the graffiti walls gone. Spider Man and newspapers go gone. gone. Uh, Vulture saying that line's gone. Yeah, the Venom line's gone. Anything that, like, super ties into the MCU or anything is, uh, that was a big part of the marketing to, uh, to like, and got lots of people talking about this movie. Yeah. Uh, gone. <laughs> yeah. It's like, well, was, yeah, were they just trying to use all that stuff to get them in and they didn't really want it in the movie or did they want it in the movie and then, like, Marvel's like, no, take all this shit out. <laughs> I reckon it was a bait and switch, like, purposely. Probably. I mean, I mean, certain. I I can understand the Matt Smith bit where it's like, oh, we want to save that reveal that he's a vampire as well. Till yeah, the, the Matt Smith movie. bit's fine. Um, and I don't like they, they. Matt Smith's barely in any of the trailers. Like, you wouldn't even realize he's the main bad guy. Yeah. of the movie based on the trailers, which is which is fine. But yeah, the the, the trailers were just filled with a lot of MCU stuff. And I think mm. it was just a bait and switch, purposely. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, well, I, actually, the more I think about it, the more interesting Matt Smith's character actually is. Like this character, who's obviously also it's hey, kind of called Milo. Yeah, also he's, he's completely like f- fuck with his brain all these years, just calling him Milo instead of his actual name. I mean, that entire scene is kind of messed up. Is like I just keep calling the kids who come to sit next to me Milo, yeah. and they just I'm end like- up dying. <laughs> Yeah, and I don't know why they kept it as a bit. Like, why would he keep calling him that as he grew, grew up to be an adult? Like, it's mean. <laughs> Maybe he's just not good with names. Anything you, there is? Any, any other reason? No, there's nothing. That, no. So, no. Dylan, what's the most marvelous moment from Bobby? <laughs> um, Matt Smith, um. Doing a little dance and a jig. I was about to say that it's Matt, Matt Smith yeah. getting dressed. It's, yeah, it's Matt Smith weirdly getting dressed. the best part yeah. of the movie. Yeah, that's probably the best part of the movie. Although I hate he has these like sort of crummy ass sneakers on with this um fancy suit. suit. Yeah, yeah, but that's the best part of the movie. Yeah, it is surprising. <laughs> Hopefully, Matt Smith gets to play like a good villain in a good movie. Yeah. He did um, last night. So that's true. All right, let's talk about Michael Keaton and the end credit scene. What? what? It it doesn't make sense within the context of the spell. So apparently, the spell happened that take, took everybody to the MCU. But th- apparently, there was a I don't know some he, he got sent away from the MCU for whatever reason. The only person to be sent out of the MCU kicked out. Um. And he just shows up in a jail cell, you know, and because they don't have any reason to keep him in jail, they let him out. You know? And then he somehow he's been able to manufacture his complete vulture suit in this universe, meets up with Michael Morbius and says, hey, this, I'm pretty sure this has something to do with Spider-Man. Let's team up. And Michael Morbius is not like, hey, I don't know who the fuck Spider-Man is. Because that's <laughs> what it should be, because he's doing all this shit all over the city and Spider-Man doesn't show up to stop anything. All these murders. Yeah, it, it, it's clearly to set up a Sinister Six movie. We know for a fact they've got uh, Craven coming out in the next couple of years, mm-hmm. starring, I want to say... Aaron Taylor Johnson? Yes, no. Aaron Taylor Johnson, yeah. Yeah. Which could be interesting, but I... Why? The bar's low. The bar is low. Sony is just really bad at these movies. I mean... They just kind of get nobodies to like. What what did Espinosa Espinosa do before? Some of the shitty movies like fucking Dracula and some shit, probably. Um, he did Life, the film starring Jake Gyllenhaal, Rick Ferguson. Oh, the Venom prequel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I I just don't think they pick good. They don't. They don't have a clear vision for what they want to do. They have a vision, and it's to make a movie that leads to the end credit scene. No, well, yeah, but they don't have a Kevin Feige who, who wants to have an ongoing series of films 
a direction. Yeah, so the fact that they have one in credit scene and then they have a second one that's just more of the first one, it's, like, so fucking weird. Um, the whole, like, Michael Keaton's vulture getting blipped out is dumb and just doesn't make any sense. Um, that it also, so yes, we now believe, so he still knows who Peter Parker is, apparently, mm-hmm. I guess, from a different universe. So he's going to look for Spider-Man in a universe where we don't know, where we know no Spider-Man exists because it's the Venom universe. And Venom doesn't, there's no Spider-Man in those movies. And we know that he doesn't know there's a Spider-Man because when when Brock goes to the other universe, he's like, oh, who the fuck's that guy? He's never seen a Spider-Man before. Um, so now he's going to be looking for a Spider-Man that doesn't exist. So what, they're, tra- they're going to magically try and make one exist? They're going to fucking bring back Andrew Garfield just to give him a terrible movie? Like, what's, I don't know what the go is here. Um, why... I don't know. There's just so many dumb things. Also, do I do I care to see another Morbius movie? No, this one was terrible. Would I care to see Michael Keaton as Vulture again? Yeah, he's great. Um, but would they be good together? No. Yeah, this... I don't know. <laughs> what are they doing? I mean, the... the uh, so the Craven movie is uh, being directed by JC Chandor, who most recently did... Uh, Triple Frontier, the Ben Affleck, Charlie Hunnam, Oscar Isaac movie where they're, they've... I mean, it wasn't terrible, but it wasn't great. But... Yeah, so, I mean, expectations are pretty low, so... <laughs> I don't know. I feel like they've gone about this, like, thing the entirely wrong way, but uh, if if you if you want to get people excited, you just need to chuck Spider-Man in there. And if Spider-Man is the entire reason you're doing this series of movies... Just throw Spider-Man in there. It doesn't even need to, you don't even need to pick which Spider-Man it is. Just put any Spider-Man in there. Put Tobey Maguire in there. He's not doing anything lately. What's even weirder is now they're going to have this, they're going to have, so what, you're going to have one universe where they're going to try and do a Sinister Six movie with Venom and all this sort of stuff, yet they've also set up to have a Venom in the MCU now, like a different one. Like, so. Yep. It's just, it's very, it's just a lot. It's a lot. Morbius. Let us know what you thought of the film by going to explosionnetwork.com slash Twitter or jump to Discord at explosionnetwork.com slash Twitter. If you want to help us out here at all new Marvelcast, leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or on Podcasts or leave us five stars anywhere. You can leave five stars and tell people about the show. That always helps. And if you like this episode, I understand why I wouldn't. And you thought it was worth it all, head on over to a Kofi page at explosionnetwork.com slash support. Uh, so the next Marvel movie in cinemas will be Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. That comes out on the 5th of May. We are also currently in the middle of doing our Moon Nights after shows, well, which release every Wednesday night after the episode comes out, whenever we get it edited and done. So make sure you watch some of that. Come back next time for another all-new Marvel cast. Okay.